So this is John from the Hometown Historian Channel. And you have to say, what in the world is John doing in the middle of a cornfield? Well, there is a reason for this. There's a cool cemetery that's up here. Would have been better to visit in an air, a time when the cornfield isn't here, but this makes for a cool video. So I'm gonna turn this around so you guys can check this out. And uh, we'll hopefully be able to make our way over to this uh, cemetery. I believe it's the Schaefer Cemetery. If I'm looking at the uh, Find a Grave app correctly, we'll know once we get up there. But uh, so we're gonna go through the corn here, and uh, hopefully we don't meet any children of the corn because that would be a bad thing. Because I think they like to eat people and kill them. So hopefully we don't do that. So let's get going on this next adventure. So one of the cool things is the nice little breeze today which makes for lots of nice noises, especially with the uh, dry corn. We're gonna have to cut through here. I was hoping there was gonna be a pathway. If you see that tree there, that's where the cemetery is. It sort of sits up on a hill, and I've seen it from a distance from the road. And uh, I've always wanted to uh, Go over and see it, and this will be easier than I thought it was going to be because the roads now go that way. Thank goodness. I was over here, this is just north of Myerstown, Pennsylvania. Uh, I had to go to the doctor for a diabetic uh, well checkup and also discuss a couple other things that we're trying to figure out these conundrums of why I'm growing horns and mooing and things of that nature, but uh. Anyways, I figured while I was out here, so I'm going to go visit a couple cool cemeteries, do some photography. And you can see how pretty it is. It's up on this hill. Oh, it's really, really nice. But I have a friend that has a farm right over past here. I used to milk cows for him. And uh, so I always saw this cemetery sitting up here. And I was always like, I've got to visit that. It looks so freaking cool. And... I think we just hit the children of the corn area again. This is the area without rows. So we'll figure this out. Oh, it's like a natural barrier. There's supposed to be like a stone wall around this thing, and uh, yep, I see it. So this is most likely this is the Schaefer farm. I think there's a monument up here as well that talks about, I believe it's a Philip Schaefer. We're almost there. You can see the stone wall now. That's really cool. This is much more interesting than it looked like from a distance. Got a little iron fence. Oh, that one hit me in an area I don't want to be hit in. Here we are. Yeah, there is a monument over there. So, now I have to figure out how the crap you know, open this. <laughs> a little simpler than I thought. Uh, this is pretty cool up here. I right, got past the fence. I gotta be a little careful in here because a lot of these old uh, cemeteries the groundhogs love to move in and live amongst the dead because they're creepy and they're weird and all that good stuff because they're groundhogs but I'll talk about then afterwards I can find some better pictures of this when it wasn't so grown up and then and then also discuss some of the names that people are here because 
maybe there's nothing. You could faintly make stuff out, but I'm also trying not to step in any groundhog holes. Get myself back in the hospital. We don't want that. Yeah, there are groundhog holes all over the place here. I don't know why. So that's sort of interesting. It's sort of a on my neck. I guess that's just like a bench that they have here. Wall sort of semi-collapsed there. But I'm sure there are a ton more stones in here because I believe it said there's like 10, 10 burials in here in the Schaefer. And we are going to move this nasty bush out of the way so we can see out of the way and we can actually tell you the story of this cemetery so here it has this beautiful monument here that they put up here and once again you can just you can see for miles and miles you over to the other mountain range just how gorgeous this is up here it's a track is definitely better to come to this place um, come when they take the corn down because my choice of timing sort of stank. So the sacred, this sacred plot of ground is dedicated to the memory of Philip Schaefer and his descendants. Philip emigrated from the Palatinate, which was in Germany, to America on the friendship, I guess that's a ship, the friendship, and arrived at Philadelphia in 1744. He acquired the 2,500 acres on the Tulpahawken Creek that included this farm uh, in 1755 and was founder of the family that continued in ownership until 1997. I sort of wonder if like they were related to the Schaefer that uh, started Schaefer's town which would have been south east of here. It's sort of interesting. Many of Philip Schaefer's descendants are buried here including his son Isaac uh, senior senior his grandson Isaac jr. and his wife Elizabeth and their sons Jacob and the Reverend John Schaefer and his wife Catherine Bamberger and their first son John their second son Jacob and his wife Magdalena Ulrich built the present farmhouse and barn in 1852 is what it looks like and are buried at Union Cemetery in Myerstown which we had visited that's uh, it was Freedens and then the Reformed Church. Uh, that was the cemetery. They just called it Union Cemetery because it was the union of two shirt, a tree, a church, two churches. Uh, in Myerstown, their five-year-old son Jacob is buried here. My grandmother Agnes Rachel Schaefer lived at this farm until she married. She, my grandfather Harry Calvin Whitmire and my mother Elizabeth Schaefer Whitmire Ray Molly are buried at nearby Kimmerling, nearby Kimmerling Cemetery which is to the west uh, my husband James Steele Tomes and I rebuilt and restored this farm farm this farmland cemetery beginning in 1987 and that's John Schaefer Whitmire Raymond Tomes, and this is March 31st, 1997. Very, very cool. Like I said, it, it's unfortunately, I think most of the stones are probably gone. Some of them are probably underneath some of the vegetation that's here. There are two, and then there's a broken one that's present. So you can see three of the stones in here, but with all the groundhog upheaval and all that good stuff. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of stones to see here, but I will get some pictures from findagrave.com so you can see what they look like when the cemetery was a little bit better shape. Um, and also uh, get the names of the individuals that are buried here. There's at least 10 that are buried here, but that's really just beautiful that they put that there. And like I said, I sort of wonder if they were related because it's the same spelling as Alexander Schaefer who founded Schaefer's Town. Get away from me.
Yeah, he's calling back. Go away. <laughs> I think it's one of those weird invasive bugs. I should have killed it, but I didn't have the heart. Hopefully I don't get attacked of the killer groundhog, but uh, you can see the one stone there, another stone there, and then there's a broken off one headstone there. So I would assume there's probably another one there, and then every single one of this area here, there's probably other stones, but with, you know, cemeteries as old, you're coming up on 300 years old, you're going to have breakdowns in the, in the stones and in the cemetery. I think there's another one there. But I don't want to have a breakdown here of my ankles, so I'm going to get out of here. Well, I haven't been attacked yet by the groundhogs and would prefer not to. But very, very neat. This is the Schaefer Cemetery, Farm Cemetery. I think it's just called the Schaefer Plot Farm Cemetery. It's beautiful with this tree here, just sort of over top. It's just a shame that it's sort of is in the condition that it's in, but a lot of these cemeteries, that's sort of what you find them in. Uh, it's just a matter of if people are gonna take care of them. And they did a really beautiful job in 1987. So think about it, I mean, it's coming up on 30 years since, well, more than 30 years, almost 40 years. So it's about 35 years that they redid the wall and put up that monument. So thank you to them for preserving this history, their family history to Schaefer family history and the descendants of Philip Schaefer. So with that, we're gonna head back on out here and uh, hopefully make it through the cornfield alive. If I don't, they'll find my phone, I'm assuming at some point, and uh, it'll sort of be like the Blair Witch Project. And they're like, what was he doing out here? All of a sudden you hear my screams. Oh well. But anyway, so thanks everybody for coming along checking this out and uh another adventure and uh we will see you again about town thanks everybody all right so as promised i uh got a couple pictures from find a grave that uh had the uh pictures of when it was a little less overgrown so you're seeing it that there uh there are it sounds like three maybe four stones are there we saw three of them one's broken other two are upright, and there apparently is another one in there somewhere. Whether that still is standing upright or not, I don't know. But you had a, a Johannes Kunkel uh, from 1791 to 1792, would be a John Kunkel. Catherine Bamberger Schaefer from 1780 to 1845. A Jacob Schaefer is another one where they uh, didn't live past a year. Uh, John Schaefer, 1803 to 1868. A John Henry Schaefer, 1780 to 1851. Isaac Schaefer, 1760 to 1801. Elizabeth Gerber Schaefer, 1754 to 1831. A Jacob Schaefer from 1788 to 1829. And then a Mary Lay Schaefer, which they have unknown to 1750. And then the overall stone and memorial there, Philip Schaefer uh 1695 to 1758 uh the only stones that actually exist are the john henry schaefer the john schaefer the Catherine bamberger schaefer and the johannes kunkel uh those stones and johannes kunkel is more of a brown stone uh type gravestone so with that i'll say thank you and uh as always we'll see you all about town